Football, the beautiful game, enjoyed by millions of players and fans around the world. But our beautiful game is facing a serious threat, match fixing. Players are being bribed and facing threats and intimidation from criminal gangs involved in illegal betting. Match fixing is destroying the careers of individual players and undermining the integrity of our game. If match fixing becomes endemic, the fans will be driven away. TV companies will not invest in televising corrupt leagues and competitions. Match fixing is a real danger to everyone involved in football. It's important that we all work together to get rid of match fixing in football. Interpol, FIFA and FIFPRO, the World Players Union, are working closely with leading players in the fight against match fixing. Match fixing is killing the game. Say no to match fixing. You must recognise, resist and report match fixing. Say no to match fixing. Match fixing is killing football. Say no to match fixing. We talked to FIFA Pro, FIFA and Interpol about how players become involved in match fixing. The fixers, um, we, don't have, we, we cannot underestimate them because they, they have a way of, like we call it, grooming to the players. They just invite a player to, uh, for a drink or uh, for a nice evening out or they take them to the casino. They make sure there are nice girls around. Then suddenly you could be in a situation where you really didn't plan to be in because uh, this guy probably paid for you a lot of uh, drinks and, uh, uh, and maybe watches uh, and nice presents. And then you feel, uh, well, you owe him something. And then from one point till another point, suddenly you are being asked to, to fix a match. It is not always easy for a young player to recognize that the fixer is approaching him. So when a person comes and uh, offering little gifts, little benefits or even cash, then the person should be very alerted and very cautious about that person. And uh, he should recognize that this is an attempt or might be an attempt to uh, get him involved in match fixing, to get him on the hook. These are not nice people. They don't care about football. They care only about making money. They may use intermediaries, retired players, retired coaches, family members, anybody who could influence somebody to fix a match. Uh, if he recognizes this approach, he certainly has, has to resist. He certainly has to give a clear, no, I don't want to get in match manipulation, in match fixing. We think that players should report and they should report to somebody they trust. That could be the players' union, that could be FIFPRO. It can be also somebody in the club or somebody in the, in the federation or maybe a family member, but they should report. He has to talk about it, he has to report it to a trusted person that could be his coach, somebody from the club, from the federation or even from FIFA through our reporting hotlines. Belize defender Ian Gaynair was approached by a match fixer before a Gold Cup game against the USA. He and fellow international Woodrow West rejected the approach and reported the incident. They received an award in recognition of their integrity and honesty. I would never think or thought that match fixing 
would have came knocking on my door. I just, he, he, he came to us real nice. This guy is really professional in what he do because I would never, never, ever thought that, you know, that's what behind his head to do. And then I was being like, I was even being too open to him. He told us he would take us wherever we want to eat or whatever we want to do. So uh, when we went to the restaurant, he said, don't worry, you could order whatever you want. I'll pay. It's nothing to me. He said, what do you think about the game between you all and the, U and the U.S.? What do you think would be the score? I said, would it be a good game? Then the guy said, Man, there is no way you can win that game. We said, well, even if we won't win the game, we'll go and fight hard to, to play our best and put out the best for our country. Then he said, do you all want to make some money? And we asked, how, how will we make this money? He said, if we could promise him that we would lose the game, he could, he could change our lives and we don't have to worry about living in poverty or, or money or nothing again. He said we live comfortable, we and our family, for the rest of our life. If we could, if we could just go and lose the game and assure him that America will win the game. Right away I wanted to go. I felt like my whole career is on the table, like, man. I said, man, I want to go, I want to go. Then he said, he saw, like, he started, be, he began getting scared. Then he said, man, I'll give you... 10,000 euros each if you all don't say anything and go and tell anyone. Then he, he, he threw a, a large amount of money on the table and said, here, man, just take it. Don't go and say nothing, just take the money. I went straight out the the restaurant and he followed me. My teammate followed me and then the guy, he came running behind us and he grabbed me and said, Ian, Ian, look into my eyes, man. Please promise me that you won't go and say anything when you get back to the hotel. I said, man, I don't make promise. And then he just disappeared. We walked to the hotel. I went straight to my coach room and we reported it. My advice to other players is to not be open to everyone. It, it's kind of sad to say, and you would want to be sincere to everyone that you meet every day, but sometimes it's kind of hard because you don't know what that person is thinking or what is his or her intention towards you or what would they want to do. And I get caught in that because I'm someone who is honest and I've been telling this guy my whole life story and everything in it, not knowing that this guy doesn't mean good for me. So know who you are talking to and know what you are telling them. My advice also is to report it immediately and directly to the to the head person that you can trust. Illegal betting is the driving force behind match fixing. FIFA are finding out which games are fixed. The EWS is monitoring the betting market in order to detect any strange odd movements in order to identify suspicious football matches. They are focusing on all FIFA competition, including all qualifying matches. And their findings will be reported to FIFA security. Most people think that match fixing happens somewhere else and that they're not or won't be a target. We know at Interpol that match fixing is happening on every continent that professional football is playing. The global nature of the betting markets means that every football association is a potential target for criminal match fixers. Uh, we have some examples of South Korea where uh, players committed even suicide and, uh, because they were caught uh, while, while fixing uh, the match. And that's something really um, yeah, very ho horrifying that even uh, uh, people are ending their lives because they don't see any way uh, out. Players who are in difficult circumstances are vulnerable. If you have an addiction to gambling or drugs or alcohol, or if you're short of money, you may be targeted by match fixers. I can uh, tell you, uh, it's about an example of a player of Croatia who was uh, playing uh, for a club 
and already for 14 months he was not being paid. He didn't get a penny. You have to imagine that such a player, he's got a family, he's got a wife, he's got children. And then they were approached, uh, and he was not alone, to, to fix uh, the match and he could get money for it. In the end he was arrested and he, he was in jail for 47 days and, and he is out of football forever, he cannot play again. And that's really a horrible situation because the thing he loved most uh, was playing football is now uh, come to an end. Omar Pape Faye from Senegal in West Africa is a player who became involved in match fixing. He told us his story. Uh, the best moments of my career were uh, playing in the Champions League uh, in Switzerland. It was like a dream. And in Senegal? Oh, well, in Senegal, playing football as well. Football for me is everything. When I'm on the pitch, they're, they're the best moments of my life. So how did you get involved in match fixing? Uh, I got involved in match fixing uh, because of someone over there in Switzerland uh, who asked me to get involved. The first time I refused, and then he kept on asking me, kept on asking me. And then one time I said yes and, uh, and I, I got involved, but I've regretted it ever since. So what did he actually ask you to do? So my, my club was playing against another club and he asked me to not play um, 100% to, to, to my level, um, to perhaps play just at 85% and then maybe we'd lose the half and then he'd give me some money. So how did you get to know him? Well, he, he came to a match, and then after the match, we'd go to a discotheque, and, um, and then he'd say, well, I've got an idea that we could, something we could do together, and so we'd have to, you know, meet up sometime and talk about it. Uh, so I said, yeah, no worries, so I gave him my telephone number, uh, and, uh, and then, yeah, after that, we organised a, a, meet, a meeting. Uh, why did I accept? Well, because, because he said, there's no problem. No one's ever going to know what happens. Well, you know, I was naive. I just didn't know. After the police interrogated me, uh, we had a match the next day and my coach told me, don't come to the stadium. There are going to be journalists there and if they start asking you questions, it might throw everything in the air and mess up our whole match. So it's probably best you just stay at home. And I said, okay, that's what I'll do. So the, the club, and it was at that point the club suspended me, uh, they stopped my pay, everything, everything. Uh, they even took my apartment uh, and it was at that point that I just came back to Senegal. So you're suspended? Yes, uh, for the suspension they said, well, yeah, there's, there's no time limit on it, it's indefinite. What do you miss the most now? Football, football, because that's all I know, football. At home with my family, that's all we talk about, football, football. That's all we knew, football. Has it destroyed your career? No, not, not just my career, it's destroyed my life. Because now all I can do is go and watch people play football, because I love football. It's really hard, it's really hard. I've lived it, it's really hard. I can't now live my passion, I can't do my work. Recognize, resist, report, match fixing. 